now we'll start with the topic flower okay now flower is defined as a highly modified shoot meant for sexual reproduction in plants okay what are the main parts of the flower that is the pedicel thalamus and floral whorl okay pedicel is nothing but the stalk thalamus is the base and uh, corolla calyx endosium gynosium are all the floral whorls okay so pedicel is the stalk you can see here this part is called the thalamus and all these things the calyx and corolla and androsium and gynosium all are what are the floral whorls so flower is defined as a highly modified shoot meant for sexual reproduction in plants remember that it is a highly modified shoot it is a part of shoot which is modified for the means of sexual reproduction it consists of pedicel thalamus and floral whorls okay now what is pedicel pedicel is the stalk of flower okay flower with pedicel are called pedicellate pedicellate flowers and flowers without pedicel are called sessile flowers okay so the stalk of the flower is called pedicel there can be presence of pedicel so these flowers will be called as pedicellate flowers and there can be absence of this pedicel and they these are called what sessile flowers okay now when we talk about the thalamus this thalamus is also called as the receptacle or the torus terminal end of the pedicel is swollen or expanded to form the floral axis okay four nodes and three internodes are there when we talk about the thalamus and from each node a whorl of modified leaves is produced okay so it is what it is a terminal end of the pedicel and it is swollen and expanded to form the floral axis see here if you can see here this is the end of the pedicel this this and the end is swollen and it is forming a swollen structure which will which is now called as the thalamus and various whorls that is the leaves and uh, leaves of calyx and corolla are arising from here okay so this is nothing but this is the thalamus now when we talk about the floral whorls these can be the non essential ones and the essential ones okay so essential whorls are the androsium and gynosium and non essential are the calyx and corolla okay calyx is the part which you see at the base of the petals okay okay that is the green color leafy structures you see and the group of these structure is called calyx and the petals the beautiful petals you see is nothing but the corolla okay so floral whorls can be divided into non essential floral whorls and essential floral whorls in essential floral whorls we have endrosium that is the male reproductive system of the flower okay and gynosium that is the female reproductive structures of the flower while non essential whorls have calyx and corolla okay now we'll talk some more things about flowers now flowers uh, in flowers uh, a flower normally arises in the axil of a small leaf structure called as a bract flowers which will have bract are called bracteate flowers and those without bracts are called ebracteate sometimes you will see small leaf like structure which will be arising from the axil okay and this is nothing but this is the bract okay now flower is said to be complete when all four floral whorls are present like endosium gynosium calyx and corolla it is incomplete when one or more of the four floral whorls are absent okay if both the floral whorls that is endrosium and gynosium is present in the same flower we call it as bisexual or hermaphrodite and if the flower is only having one of the essential whorls that is endrosium or gynosium then the flower is said to be unisexual okay uh, a unisexual may be male or staminate when only endrosium is present and female you will call it as stilet and a flower is said to be neuter when both the essential whorls are absent okay so here we talked about bracteate and ebracteate flowers flowers with the with the bract are called the bracteate flowers and without bract are called the ebracteate 
flowers can be complete if all the four four whorls are present flowers can be incomplete if any one of the four floral whorls is absent flowers are bisexual when both the central whorls that is floral whorls that is endosium and gynosium is present and if only one of the central whorls that is either endosium or gynosium is present then they are called bisexual unisexual flowers okay if endosium is present they will be called as the staminate or male flower and if only uh, gynosium is present they will be called pistillate or female flowers okay now when we talk about the flowers with reference to symmetry a flower is said to be actinomorphic when it can be divided into two equal halves along any of the radii passing through the center okay so the flower should be in round shape so when we cut this flower in any equal any plane we will able to achieve two equal parts okay so uh, this is what this is an actin actinomorphic flower a flower is said to be zygomorphic when it is divided into two equal halves only along one radius okay as we talk about the bilateral symmetry so is the zygomorphic and a flower is said to be asymmetrical when it, it cannot be divided into two equal halves from any plane okay so sorry the spelling is wrong here plane p l a n e so a flower can be actinomorphic can be divided into two equal halves in more than one plane zygomorphic divided into two equal halves only in one plane and asymmetrical when cannot be divided into two equal halves from any plane okay now with reference to the floral leaves in each world these can be isomerous or heteromerous now isomerous flowers are the flowers which have the same number of floral leaves in each of its world are called the isomerous flower like dimerous floral leaves are two or in multiples of it okay also trimerous the floral leaves will be three or in multiple of three that is in monocots tetramerous flo floral leaves are four or in multiples of four and pentamerous floral leaves are five or in multiple of five that is in dicots so here you can give a difference between the monocot and dicot that monocots generally have the trimerous flowers and dicots have the pentamerous flowers okay exceptions are there but this you can give a proper Uh, difference between monocot and dicot what are now heteromerous flowers flowers which have different number of floral leaves in each of its worlds are called the heteromerous so it will not have the floral leaves or in multiples of it it will have very different suppose if the floral leaf is 2 then the other floral world will have 7 okay like this so flowers with the reference to the floral leaves in each world they can be isomerous and heteromerous both now on the basis of the insertion of the four floral leaves uh, we can say that flowers can be hypogynous perigynous and epigynous okay now in hypogynous you see that what are the points conical thalamus ovary has superior position the rest of the floral whorls are inserted below gynosium and example brinjal mustard china rose okay you have to learn example here in each and every case okay so here you can say that this is the thalamus okay and ovary is bearing the superior position and all the other whorls are arising below ovary okay so this kind of floral this kind of floral arrangement when seen in flowers this particular flower is called as hypogynous flower okay now in the b part you can see that okay this is a perigynous example here this is the ovary but this is not in the superior position okay the uh, the ovary is not ended here in the middle of the gynosium part okay in the middle of the pistillate part the floral whorls are arising okay so they are arising at the periphery in both b and c diagram so here the ovary is half superior you can say half inferior so this is an example of perigynous here the thalamus is thalamus is cup shaped okay saucer shaped ovary has half uh, half superior position or you can say half inferior position the rest of the floral whorls are inserted around the gynosium okay these are inserted around the gynosium or they are making a periphery 
so these are the example of perigynous flower this one and this one okay now we see the epigynous one so epigynous flower you'll see that the floral whorls the ovary is in inferior position and all the floral whorls are arising above the ovary okay so here the thalamus grows upwards enclosing the ovary completely ovary has inferior position okay rest of the floral whorls are inserted above gynoecium example sunflower and guava so this is what this is epigynous flower so on the basis of insertion of floral leaves when the floral leaves are arising below the ovary it is called hypogynous if it is uh, not superior and not inferior in middle of that th uh, then that condition is called perigynous and if it is enclosing the ovary then it is called as the um, epigynous one okay so this is an important part and you have to remember with example hypogynous perigynous and epigynous these diagrams are taken from your textbook okay now we talk about calyx what is calyx now the outermost whorl of the flower is calyx and individual members of the whorl are green in color and they are called sepals okay now individual member we'll call them as sepal now sepals can be free so we'll call that as polysepalous and they can be fused they are called gamosepalous okay now there are certain conditions as a caducus that is sepals fall off as soon as the flower opens decidus that is sepals survive till the withering of the petal occurs and persistent that is sepals remain even after fruit formation okay so these are the conditions okay and here we see when they are united they are forming a cup shaped structure it is called gamosepalous okay uh gametogenesis or uh, gametogenesis means there is fusion of something okay so your gametocephalus means there is fusion of what sepals and free when they are called poly uh, when the when anything is free from each other you will say that these are many okay so the name comes poly means many so polysepalous okay what are the function of this calyx protection of flower in the bud condition photosynthesis okay petaloid sepals attract insects for pollination and hairy calyx help in the dispersion of the fruits okay now the corolla now corolla is the second whorl of the flower larger in size and inner inner to the calyx okay individual members of the whorls are called petals there we call them as sepals and here we call them as petals and which are colored and scented okay when petals are free we call that condition as polypetalous and when they are fused we call them as gamopetalous now function is attraction the bright color attracts birds and insects for pollination uh, the uh, tubular gamopetalous corolla can store nectar for attraction okay and protection of the essential work so here you can see here in this flower there is a tubular gamopetalous the petals are united to form a tube like structure and here nectar can be stored and which will attract the insects for pollination okay now what is perianth okay perianth is nothing but when calyx and corolla are similar okay and when you cannot differentiate between them okay these are called they will not be called as sepals or they will not be called as petals they will be called as tepals okay now when these tepals are free we call them polyphyllous and when they are fused we call as gamophyllous okay tepals when green are called sepaloid and when colored we call them as petaloid as we as the name suggests tepals we cannot differentiate between the petal and sepal so when they are green they will look like what they will look like calyx okay so we call them as sepaloid as the individual uh, individual member of the calyx was called as sepal and when it is colored we call as petaloid function is what function is both as a calyx and corolla it protects the essential whorls in bud condition okay a sepaloid perianth perform photosynthesis and a petaloid perianth will attract the insects for pollination so perianth is nothing but when you cannot differentiate between the calyx and corolla we call them as tepal okay now comes the estivation now mode of arrangement of sepals and petals in flower with reference to the members of the same whorl is called estivation or we can say that the mode of arrangement of sepal and petals in bud condition is called estivation so the first one is the valvet okay so you can see here each and every 
petal or sepal is not overlapping each other okay and it's not uh, fused with each other they are in close contact so when they are in close contact with each other but do not overlap then this this estivation is called valet valvet estivation okay it is called valvet and this example is the dhatura okay so they are not overlapping they are in close com, com uh, close contact with each other and they are not overlapping each other now the second is the twisted here each and every floral whorl is overlapping you can see the overlap here 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 okay one margin is inwards and overlap other margin is outwards and overlaps the margin adjacent to one and the example is the china rose you can see here in the diagram see here you can see the diagram see here once it's on the upper side okay and the other one it will be on the downside okay see look at this leaflet i'm talking about this leaf so here it is on the downside and here it is overlapping on the upper side okay so this kind of overlapping will be seen as a one margin will be outwards and the other margin will be inwards okay see here this if we talk about this leaf this petal or this sepal this is overlapping on the outer side and here it is overlapped inwards okay so this is twisted estivation now comes the imbricate here one sepal or one petal is overlapped at both margins one sepal and petal overlaps at both margin okay rest of the sepal and petals are like twisted variety okay so one of the petal will be overlapped at both margin okay here you have to see if you talked about this petal this black one you can see that it is overlapped on both side by other petals or sepals okay this one is overlapping the end of this and this is overlapping the end of this so one is overlapped and others are overlapped in the same way as was in the previous one okay twisted one okay so one is completely overlapped on both the margins and the other will be in the twisted form so this is what this is the imbricate estivation you can see here in the diagram also now next come the vexillary now this vexillary estivation is uh, a specific type of estivation which is found in family fabaceae here uh it has it is butter, uh, butterfly shaped and has five petals outermost is the largest see you can see here okay outermost is the largest two lateral wings are there here and here okay two smaller that is nearly fused here boat shaped okay which are called keel or carina and this is the example of p so the outermost petal will be called standard or vexillum the two lateral ones will be called as wings and the two little ones which are fused are called the keel or carina okay so this is observed in pea plant now this was the valvet where if they were in close contact but not overlapping in twisted each one was overlapping in each other now in imbricate one was completely overlap and other were in twisted form and in vexillary one was the vexillum these were the wings okay and these two were the keels okay so these are the four types of estivation that is valvet twisted imbricate and vexillary and this is very important now comes the androecium now androecium is the male reproductive whorl made up of stamens and is also called microsporophyll now when stamens are free it is called polyandrous and when fused it is called cohesion now when we talk about the structure of stamen it has filament filament is a stalk of stamen with anther and its tip okay if filaments fuse and anthers are free it is called adelphi monodelphus that is hibiscus diadelphus p polydelphus that is citrus okay so it will be like if the filaments are fused to form two if it is alone it is called monodelphus if they are forming two groups then diadelphus if they are forming uh, more than two groups then it is called polydelphus if anthers are fused and filaments remain free the condition is called as syngenie okay that is seen in sunflower now upper so upper swollen fertile part of the stamen is anther if one lobe is present it is called monothicus if two lobes are there it is called diadithicus each lobe will have two chambers that is locules called pollen sacs microsporangia in which pollen grains or microspores are produced okay now see you can see here the monodelphus diadelphus and the polydelphus 
so you can see here monodelphus only one group is there all have combined to form this can be seen in hibiscus in diadelphus you can see this in p see you can see one stamen is here and other nine stamens are so they are forming two groups and here more than two groups are there see this group and this group and this group okay so more than two groups can be there so that is polydelphus now when we talk about the gynoecium gynoecium is the female reproductive whorl made up of carpels also called as megasporophylls when they are fused they are called syncarpels and when these carpels are free they, that is called apocarpels uh, also there are terms like monocarpellary okay that is in p bicarpellary two carpel tricarpellary if three and pentacarpellary if five carpels are there okay here yeah, you can see in the diagram this is a syncarpels gynoecium carpel all the carpels are fused together okay now when we talk about carpel we have three parts that is stigma style and ovary so stigma is a terminal part of the carpel rough and sticky and this is the site of pollination okay receives pollen grain for pollination now style is narrow elongated part okay this one thread like structure connecting stigma with the ovary and finally comes the ovary this is the basal swollen part having a chamber which is called locule it can be unilocular that is p bilocular trilocular tetralocular and pentalocular and each lobule contains ovules on a fertile tissue called the placenta so these are the ovules which are attached with the ovary wall with the help of the placenta okay now comes the placentation this is also very important now when the ovules are born at the fuse margin of the unilocular ovary it is called marginal placentation it's like this is the uh, ovary part and the ovules are attached in this way with the placenta okay now in exile you can see in the diagram here in exile uh, ovules are produced on the central axis it is produced on the central axis of multilocular ovule that is ovary ovaries many ovaries are fused and the ovules are present in the center okay then comes the parietal one okay here in parietal parietal means on the periphery so the ovules are born on the inner wall of the unilocular ovary so mostly here it will be unilocular ovary and ovules are born on the periphery okay these are called what in a multicarpally syncarpus gynoecium that is in cucumber okay now this is free central here ovules are born on central axis and septa are absent see here we were able to see the septa these divisions okay but here we are not able to see the septa so it is free central and last comes the single ovule is born at the base of the unilocular ovary okay single ovule is there an example is sunflower okay so here we studied some basic terms and basic concepts okay that is the basic uh things about a flower and the arrangement of the ovule that is a placentation and the arrangement of the petals in sepal in the bud condition that was estivation and other things were basic according to a uh flower